operate in truth, right? Operate in truth. You know, tell the truth. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Gator Truth Florida Football Podcast. On this episode of Huddle Up Gators, I do have someone that is kind of special to me, and that is Aaron Bland, the owner of GatorChatter.com. Aaron has been great back in 2018. He let me start writing little columns on Gator Chatter, which is a message board, and that throughout the years has evolved into me being able to do this show. So thank you for coming on, Aaron, and thank you for everything. Can you tell us uh, about your Gator story? Daniel, thanks for having me. Has it been five years you've been contributing on Gator Chatter? I, you know, you <laughs> offer such great free content, and it's um, it's optimistic, but it's also realistic, and I think the uh, the members uh, uh, approve of that. So, thanks for giving us something you know to read for. I can't believe it's been five years now. Um, my Gator story. Uh, I was born in 76. In the mid 80s, we lived in Flagstaff, Arizona, which is in the Rockies, little town in Arizona. And my first taste of college football was going to Northern Arizona Lumberjack football games. And uh, Flagstaff at the time had the biggest wooden dome in the world. So going to those games was really fun. And uh, I actually found out recently that Andy Reid was an assistant coach for NAU in 86. So little did I know Andy Reid was on the sideline uh, when I was going to those games at, at, at age 10 and 11. Uh, interesting uh, bit of trivia there. But when I was 13 in the summer of 89, uh, my family up and moved to Gainesville. Had never been to Florida, knew nothing about Florida, certainly knew nothing about how insane a college town um, could be. And uh, when I got to town and 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 made some new friends, the first thing they said was, we're going to take you to a Gator game. So I got to go to the opening game of the 89 season. Um, Galen Hall was the coach. Kyle Morris was the quarterback. Emmett Smith was there. And I got to witness the last home opening loss for the Florida Gators. What are the 30... Coming up on 35 years. I guess they've won 33 straight home openers since then, something like that. So Florida was pretty awful that day. Um, but it certainly wasn't its insane experience with the um the, the noise was just mind-boggling for someone who had who had never had never never experienced it. And I remember also during that off season, we could go, you could go down on the field and play on the artificial turf. I remember throwing the football around. Um on the artificial turf. And I couldn't believe how hard it was and that the players actually tackled uh, themselves on that crap. I, I really, I couldn't believe it. But then of course, so I was there when Spurrier came to town and uh, he put natural grass in. So I was fortunate enough to be, you know, watch every, every play of the Spurrier era. And that was really needless to say a golden era of, of Gator football. Um, the uh, most of I was in high school at the time, but most of my I went to Gainesville High School my freshman year, and I went to Buholtz High School the last three years. Graduated in '94, but most of my friends at that time were um, actually in UF. They were college guys, and uh, just they were just insane diehards. And uh, I was a fan, but I wasn't at that time. I wasn't as diehard as they were. It wasn't life and death to me yet. And the turning point was in '95. Um, I was offered tickets to go see the Tennessee game. Tennessee was coming to the swamp. And uh, I sat with a friend of mine in the Tennessee section that Ooh. day. And I was surrounded with these mostly older people, uh, mostly very overweight. Uh, they had these funny hats on and these, these weird vests with pins all over them. And the women were far more mouthy than the men. I mean, these were argh, these kind of women. And of course they got out to a um, 30 to 14 lead in that game. And um, those people up there were so insufferable and I was in the middle of it. And I mean, I was just incensed by these people. And of course, then the 
Florida went absolutely crazy. Uh, 49 unanswered or yeah. what, it, what it was. 62, 37 ends up 62, being and every, t- and every time Florida would score, I would stand up and announce how many unanswered that was, you know, 21 unanswered, 28 <laughs> unanswered, you know, the rains came by, by the time we got to 62, it was empty. We were sitting up there. We were alone. We were soaking wet and absolutely alone in that section. And everybody left elated and everybody was singing. It's great to be a Florida Gator as they stormed out. And that day, my, my fandom went. I became a fanatic that day. It was the Tennessee fans. The Tennessee fans are what, are what put me there. Um, that's, one of my, that, that's one of my greatest memories. And shortly after that, I actually moved to Colorado. I lived in Colorado from 96 to 2001. And some of the greatest years in Gator football, I was actually out of Florida. When uh, my, my birthday's on January 2nd. So on my 20th birthday, we played Nebraska for the Ooh. national championship. And we, we know what happened that day. Yeah. Um, fortunately, my 21st birthday, one year later, we won the national championship. So people talk about their greatest skater memory. I would think it has to be that game with the, with the buildup. It was my birthday. Um, Florida never won the national championship. They gotten crushed the year before they're playing their biggest rival who had just beaten them weeks earlier. And, uh, fortunately I was with a, my roommate out there and, uh, in Colorado was a, a Florida alum. So he was a, he was a nut job and we drove home. We went and watched it at someone else's house. And when we drove home, we were uh, just uh, jamming the song celebrate uh, on repeat and uh, singing all the way home. And uh, there's nothing like after years of, of failing to finally uh, get to that plateau. Yep. Still the last school to win their first national championship in football. And that's us. And, Man, and you talk about that 95 Tennessee game going back. It's funny for those that live through it, everyone brings up what a great fun game that was. I remember being a kid now. I was eight, but I still remember playing in the rain, filling up a cup in the rain and like tossing it everywhere and having a Tennessee fan bias who was not enjoying that. I was enjoying the game, but also, hey, I got to play in the rain and that was fun too. But a moment that I had that I associate with that game and I didn't mean anything bad by it, but now you'd be like, Oh, that's trolling. They used to, the opposing bands used to get on their bus by the O'Connell center and we would park down at Flavit field. So we're walking back and the Tennessee band is, you know, getting on their bus and I stop one of the band members. I'm like, well, you sounded good today which is probably not what you want to hear after you've just had your team blown out. But that for some reason is one of my early Gator memories, but I love that, you know, a lot of people I talk to bring up that 95. So I'm like, ah, this is a good time to share my 95 Tennessee memory. And like you said, coming back from well behind and people talk about, you know, the, uh joey kent biting his tongue in half and then of course we get the fumble most people don't remember we fumbled away on the next play uh my uncle always brings that up when we talk about 95 tennessee but yeah one one of the greatest games and happy birthday to you getting a first natty i man that would have been a great 21st birthday in new orleans but i'm sure you had just as much well mostly as much fun uh in colorado you know, it's even a better, better story about that is before the game, we went around the room and uh, me and my friends tried to predict what the score would be. And I predicted 52-20. Wow. Um, which I had forgotten about until it was 45-20 and Florida was driving at the very end of the game. Then I really started rooting hard for that last touchdown. So <laughs> it was just a special day. But I, I mean, I was listening to an earlier guest you had, and I think he called uh, people sidewalk alums, which I, I guess is yes. what I am. Because I didn't actually attend... Uh, Florida as a as a student. Um, what I am is a product of Gainesville. So when you live in Gainesville, they pull you into this culture, whether you want it or not. And um, 
I remember in, in 1990, I was a freshman in high school and a friend of mine, we borrowed IDs from some college friends of ours to go play in the Florida gym. We wanted to play pickup basketball. And there was always some clown student checking IDs as people came in. He wasn't even looking. He was just doing this. So you would just, you could just flash this ID and he'd let you in. And as freshmen in high school, we were in there and we, we, we were good players. We played really well, but you know, I found out later that that gym was, you know, Florida's basketball gym in the sixties and seventies, their main gym and legends like Pete Maravich had played on that same court, Yep. you know, um, which I thought was just really cool. Just great tradition at that, at that school. You know, my, my, my parents still live in Gainesville and have since 89. So I still, um, I'm a few hours South of Gainesville now, but I still go up there every four to six weeks. So Gainesville is still such a big part of my life. And it's, it's a town that, that grabs you. And it, even when you move away, you can still almost feel it. For for sure. And I've only lived in Gainesville very, very briefly when I was up there for law school. And even then my last year, I was technically living back at, at home because we had been running out my house and unfortunately we didn't have a renter the last year. So I was a, a what do you call it? a commuter to Gainesville, but yes, a terrific, terrific town. And for sure it drags you in whether you want it to or not. So um, what would you say for when you have attended games or even at home watching now, what would you say some of your favorite parts of a Gator game are? You know, it's funny, even when the Gators aren't very good, and let's face it, they haven't been very good in a while, um, you can't wait till game day. Here I am, I hear people complaining right now, this is going to be the worst season, Bob, whatever. And yet, and, and yet I'm excited for the season. I'm excited about it. We have this long summer, and I can't wait till kickoff. I may regret it once the ball is kicked off, but... I love the feeling of game day, um, Daniel. Yep. Um, it's impossible to describe, it, and then it never goes away. It's it may be a little stronger when the Gators are good. Um, I've had Gator chatter now for ten years, which is what's cool about Gator chatter is we have a live a live chat box. So during games, there'll be 20, 30, 40 people in there psycho fanatics like me and just reacting to every single play. Um, the ups and downs are beyond belief. And I look so forward to just, it's like being at a game on the internet. Yes. <laughs> so that's definitely become a tradition the last 10 years. Sometimes it gets so bad. You got to just leave for a while, but, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I find myself excited. Here I am excited about the season. People say, oh, Florida's going to be terrible. They're going to win three games. They're going to win four games. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. But I can't wait. I can't wait to watch it. Yep. It's something I never want to go away. As I see college football become more and more like the NFL, that's difficult for me. That's depressing for me. Um, I'm hoping we can hang on to this feeling. We all need, you know, Florida. Uh, football is an escape. Yes. Uh, we all, <laughs> we need it. We need to stay the way it is. Yeah, it's sad the way it's changing. Although I, I will say one thing a little bit with expansion, hopefully it doesn't go too much further, but we know it may, is you never know what could end up. Like Florida, Tennessee wasn't a rivalry until the first SEC expansion, and then we got them as division rivals, and we both became great at the same time. So I'm hoping maybe so we get something special out of this, like, we've seen before um, as far as the game changing, but yeah, yeah, there's no feeling like game day. I've been in that chat box a few times. If you've not experienced it, definitely join Aaron and everyone else in that chat box. If you're watching from home, because it is a sight to behold and it is like a roller coaster ups, downs, living and dying with every play. Definitely a good time. Of course, if you're in the stadium, sometimes you get that up, down, dying with, living and dying with every play as well. Oh, man. Yeah, Florida just needs to, when you watch the Tennessee game last year, when the crowd was the 12th man again, that crowd can can win games for Florida. It's that powerful. And we need that so so badly 
The Gators need that home crowd. We have to win home games. That's a, such a massive advantage. Um, we have to, our fans are just so, when they are excited, there is nothing like that stadium. Um, you can feel it at home. Those people in the crowd, I know they go home with their ears ringing. It's, uh, yep. it is, there's no place like it with the sound. One, 100%. As someone who's been to his fair share of games, both home and away, I can say the atmosphere and the swamp is like none other. Uh, let's, let's rotate a little bit now. Um, who's your favorite Gator player of all time? You know, that's a tough one. Um, I tend to, when I think of my favorite players of all time, I tend to think more of Spurrier players and, uh, believe it or not, the player that jumps at me first is Fred Taylor. I was such a huge Fred Taylor guy. He was so unbelievably talented um so fat big and fast and i remember when he was heading into the nfl i was thinking the nfl maybe got to be crazy to pass on this guy and i remember the bears took curtis enos ahead of him <laughs> the fifth pick or something yep i just thought it i just thought it was insanity you know and he went to jacksonville which is kind of a home state team and when he went to jacksonville i kind of became a jags fan and sure enough he became the player that we knew he would be, he was so incredibly talented while Curtis Enos was a bust. Um, and I still, I collect Fred Taylor stuff and cards and things like that. I still, but just that era with, with, with Ike Hilliard and Riddell and Werfel and those guys, they, they jumped to my mind more than the Meyer guys who I still love the Tebow's and the Harvins, but there was something so special about those nineties Gator teams. I mean, I was in Gainesville when Spurrier, left florida to go to washington and it was like someone died it was it felt like a, a funeral in the town it was a sad day uh you just expected him to be there uh 12 years and uh and he was gone and that's why to this day you know uh, people have asked me who's the, the biggest who's the biggest who do you consider the biggest rival to me it's florida state because in the 90s florida state was the big powerhouse they were the ones that were tough to beat. They were the top five team. Florida beat Georgia every single year. Florida owned right. Georgia for most of the last 25 years. Uh, Tennessee was also pretty good, um, but we went on a streak against them too. But Florida State, not only were they good, but they were dirty. The Bobby yep. Bowden teams, they were just – you just despised them. And so to this day, to this day, I consider Florida State – I hate them the most. And you know what? For the same reasons, I I feel the same way. I tell people when I was growing up in the 90s, 2000s, Georgia was just the team that we beat in Jacksonville. I think between 1990 and 2010, we lost to them three times. Meanwhile, FSU, we couldn't beat them under Spurrier. We couldn't beat them at Doak. They beat us at home a few times. Yep. And then... Ron Zook, you know, lost, I believe, the first two games. And, of course, 04 was that magical night. And then then we had Meyer, who started a five-game run against them. So, but, yeah, it's – I always know when people started watching based on who that rival is. And yeah, when I yeah, see yeah. Georgia, like – Okay, you're either a really older fan who remembers when we couldn't beat Georgia before Spurrier, or you're a newer fan who sees it now when we're having struggles every year. But yeah, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't a Gator fan, you know, in the '70s and '80s. I didn't right. uh, I didn't experience that pain, the Herschel Walker stuff, and all that stuff. The, the, you're right; these old timers, man, they've built up a Georgia hate that uh, can't be topped for sure and there are a few of those on the chatter uh for <laughs> that are going to see this and be like that's me um <laughs> probably break out that little uh oh ten and one uh emoji oh, yeah. you have <laughs> <laughs> on the site but for for sure uh fsu is the biggest one for me so um as personally what are some things you hope for in the future as far as like an experience or something you hope to see from the team? Not necessarily like a prediction for this year, but 
what is like a personal goal uh, for you involving the Gators? You know, needless to say, it's for them to be successful. But I mean, under Spurrier, for example, we won so much. Um, and especially after we won that first title, you know, by the time we get to 2001, we were just, our expectations were just championship or bust. And then we had a da- little bit of a, just a little bit of a downtime. And then Meyer brought us up here again. Yep. And we were so successful for so long. Maybe we didn't appreciate the championships enough, but now we've gone on a, a stretch of 12, 13, 14 years of mediocrity winning now. I mean, winning a championship now would mean so much because of this buildup of just being awful for so long, climbing this mountain. And I mean, I might have tears rolling down my face if Florida ever manages to, to win another championship, but I mean, it's, there's no excuse for, for the program to be where it is. It's too powerful of a program. It's too, it's in too, it ha, it's in an ad, advantageous spot too much. So to be, so lousy for so long. So there's no reason to go on the reasons for that, but right. Let's just, let's just get to the playoffs. You know, let it'd be nice to have some bragging rights again. And now we're looking up to Georgia. I mean, who, who wants to be in a position of looking up at the Bulldogs? It's horrible. We, we, we have to turn the tables, but especially It'll, now with the new recruiting things, and everything, it's a totally different dynamic. Um, the good part is the way it is now with kind of free agency is teams can be turned around quickly, really quickly. You don't necessarily have to build up three, four, five years of recruiting to be a powerhouse with the transfers and everything now. Uh, but you have to have the right people in place. And whether Billy Napier is the guy or not, we'll find out a lot more this year. Yep. And like you said, looking forward to it for better, for worse, it's gear football. And that's that's what we're here for, right? Never gets old. Nope. <laughs> For sure. Uh, anyways, um, looks like we got a little bit of time. I've got to ask you uh, this one, and I'm sure I may get a little bit of laughter uh, from our friends at Gator Chatter when they give this a look. Who is a team other than Florida that you pay attention to or watch? Um, well, other than our rivals who I only pay attention to, to pull for the other team. So every week, my favorite teams are whoever's playing Tennessee and Florida state and Georgia. Um, my wife was born and raised an Auburn fan. Her dad's an alum. They've been fanatics since she was born. And she, my wife is probably a bigger football fan than me. She will watch anything. She watches high school football, preseason football. She'll just turn on football. I can't watch just any football. I get bored with it. She'd take anything. Uh, she's a, a football nut, and she will not miss a play of Auburn football, and she expects me to not miss a play of Auburn football with her. So <laughs> I find myself, whether I want to or not, uh, watching Auburn football. And uh, they've been in a bit of a rut as well, but um, – They've had some some interesting some seasons in the past, and it's fun. I like I like making my wife happy. I like seeing my wife happy, so I pull for them to win um, as well, um, just so she's happy. But uh, they've had some of the craziest moments in college football in the last ten yep. years, and I've been watching them all live. <laughs> um, right there, I, I've had Auburn people in my house. I've had a house full of Auburn fans when some of those moments have happened. And I mean, I had people almost hit the ceiling in my house. So um, she, one thing I'll say about that though, is her, before she met me, her family hated the Gators. She hated the Gators. Her family hated the Gators. They were pulling for Ohio state when we played them for the national title after the 06 <laughs> season. I met them shortly after that. But they like me, evidently. And since then, they have also watched Gator games and they pull for the Gators for me. So I recruited a few Gators, but, you know, so we work with each other. The good thing about it is I, I don't consider Auburn a rival. We don't play often enough. You know, it, if my wife had been a Knoll or a Bulldog or a Tennessee ball, you know, we may not have gotten past the first date. We may not have gone on a date in the first place. So, um, <laughs> 
Uh, same yeah. this year, man. I'll be seeing, you know, people talk about Bo Nix. You know, Bo Nix won the NFL. I said, man, I watched Bo Nix every snap when he was at Auburn. You know, I know I know quite a bit about Auburn players, uh, just like Florida players. So it's kind of funny. Yeah, you know, it's uh, kind of funny while you bring that up. Auburn was one of our longest annual games until they cut the divisions to just one annual uh, game and we kept LSU and Auburn went with Georgia, but my wife's uncle who lived with me for a while, that was his most hated gear opponent was Auburn because apparently when he was at uh, UF Auburn beat us on homecoming one year. And that is something that has stuck with him throughout time. He's like, is that under Spurrier, the, the 93 game, 93 or 94? Oh, I, you know, I don't remember which one it was for. Yeah, him. We lost two years in a row. Yeah. 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 And he, oh, <laughs> he's like, they ruined homecoming. So I don't know if he had like a big date that got ruined and it stuck with them all these years later, but Terry Bowden. Yeah. That was yeah. made it worse. It was a Bowden uh, coaching that made it worse. Yeah. 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 yeah if that, <laughs> that's the one that he had for, <laughs> for sure. Um, Oh my gosh. Yeah. As I'm trying not to really laugh at the situation, but yeah, we'd watch Gator games and he'd be like, and unfortunately the one game we watched where we played Auburn, it was, what was it? 2011 or 2013. I think it was 2011. Will Muschamp, we lost and it was rainy and the halo rule wasn't quite in effect that year, something like that, but we lost not good. And Oh, he was furious, but you know, I'm, I'm lucky. A lot of people have spouses that don't like football yeah. and the spouses, they get annoyed when their uh, husband is off watching football. Uh, that's stupid football. You know, my wife is pushing me to get in here and watch the game kind of thing. So in that regard, I'm lucky. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. I can say, luckily, my wife also watches football and joins me on some of these road trips, but not all of them, uh, but definitely watches the Gators with me. So let's go ahead. I want you to tell the listeners who don't know about the, in a way, the family that is the Gator Chatter message board. Yeah, back in 07, I joined the Gator Sports Message Board, and that was the message board for the uh, the Sun, the Gainesville Sun. So it had been around for years, and it was a very active board, thousands of members. And uh, everything was fine. We were great for years. Um, around 2013, we had started having some problems. It was an old website. They wouldn't upgrade it. There was a lot of problems. It froze up. The threads would be out of order. You know, this is just, it's an anonymous message board. You know, people go on Facebook now and they're in these groups, but they're not anonymous. You know, you got to use your real name. The format stinks. I can't stand these Facebook groups. I like the old fashioned message board where you can pick a username and post anonymously if you want to. So the point is we were all, there was a lot of us that were complaining. I was a moderator on the site at that time. And there was some shenanigans. Some, some people were misbehaving and some of the higher ups of the sun got annoyed and they said, we woke up one day and they shut this, the site down. There was a, a white screen that said, we're done. You know, uh, because of disruptive posters, we we're closing the message board. Now this is a, this is a struggling newspaper that thought it was a good idea to push thousands of people off their website not the smartest people in the world. So I immediately within a day or two, I had created Gator Chatter. I had found that name available and bought some message board software. Um, people knew my, my name. I was a moderator. I was well known. Um, the handle was Oxrageous. People knew who I was. I also had a website, Oxrageous.com. I did a podcast like you're doing now. And um, so people would go to my website and I had referenced Gator Chatter. So people started following me over. And within a few days, I had a couple hundred members, most of the old guard, and a good chunk of them are still here today. This is 2014, this happened. And it just, from there, I, from there, it just kept building. And it's been a, a family since then. 
uh, people make it their daily stop and not just about football. We, you know, we have sections for politics, if you want to talk about that, or the, the lounge or business or hobbies, or we've got all kinds of different sections and, and people come every single day. It's part of their day just to come and chat with, with, with old friends. You know, I, I have people on there I've known now since 07, since the old Gator Sports Messages Board. You know, we're coming up on 20 years. I've known these people, known them. Um, and over the years, um, we've had some tailgates in Gainesville that people yep. came to, to Gainesville. We've got, we've gotten together and gotten to meet in some of these people in person, which has been great, but it's just a, it's just a message board. That's all it is, but it's a family. It's a place to go and vent. And let's face it. That's all Gator fans seem to want to do these days is vent understandably when you're coming off two losing seasons, let's face it once during the Spurrier years. Or the Meyer years. The idea that Florida the Gators would ever have two straight losing seasons was unthinkable. It yes. didn't seem possible. It didn't seem possible that the Gators could ever lose less than five games in a season. It's just even in a bad year, you'd think you'd win seven games, but we were wrong. So that's all Gator chatter is. Um, I think if the Gators actually start winning again, let's face it, the, the fan base is depressed. A lot of people have tuned out. It's not fun for them. They don't want to talk about it. If the Gators can just, you know, let's get back on the saddle here. Um, I think we'll get, we'll have another influx of members and some more, you know, some more people excited to talk about Gator football because there's just not a lot of excitement right now. There's nothing to talk about right now. The Gators have to say it on the field because Daniel, we know that winning fixes everything. Yes. No matter how miserable it is, people are fighting, infighting, a civil war. If we start winning, suddenly everybody's happy. Everybody walks around with a smile on their face. Winning solves everything, no matter how you do it. Let's just win. Yep. There are a post or two I won't say specifically that I'm sure will stick to character and may not be celebrating as hard as the rest of us, but that's what makes it fun uh, for sure. <laughs> Well, at some point, if you if you do nothing but recycle coaches every three years, I just don't know if you can ever dig your way out of a hole. We uh, yeah. let's just this is a big year. It's a third year for yeah. our coach. It should be a turning point. There's a lot to like about Neil, Billy Napier. It's easy to pull yeah. for Billy Napier. You know, Dan Mullen wasn't the most likable guy. It wasn't as easy to pull for Dan Mullen. No. It's easy to pull for Billy Napier. You want him to succeed. He's a great guy. He's a nice guy. He's a professional. Yep. Um, he's the opposite of Deion Sanders. You know. So I hope he succeeds. Desperately hope. Yep. And if he succeeds, everyone's happy. The people that are doubters, the defenders, everyone's happy. And hopefully that's what we see. Uh, before we get out of here, is there any one last, last message that you would have for the listeners? Let's try to stay just a little bit optimistic. You know, um, we tend to get in this rut, and I guess it's understandable after 14 years, it really is, that when things are like this, they can only stay like this or get worse. You know, things can improve just because we won six games last year doesn't mean we're going to win six games or less this year. Uh, especially when you've had, you've added talent, more, more pieces have been put in place. Let's not throw, I'm trying not to throw dirt on the program yet. Um, I think almost any coach deserves three years. Um, if we tank another season, no matter how much I may like Billy, um, this is big boy football and you got to move on. <laughs> you you got to see improvement by year three, period. So, yep. And we'll, we'll see if that happens and it, it'll be a good time. You know, it's gear football would be good time saying if it happens, if it doesn't happen, we'll fit, figure it out and go from there. Um, once again, thank you for joining us. Like I told you before we got on air, you were one of my first people I wanted to go to and be like, hey, man, can I get you on? You're such a big gator. You started your own 
own message board platform, which is pretty big. And so again, thank you for coming on. Daniel, thank you so much. It was great uh, talking to you. Maybe we can do it again one of these days. And um, uh, go Gators. Had a great time and uh, looking very forward to the season. Sounds good. And thank you everyone for listening. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and let me know who you'd like to see come on Huddle Up Gators. With that said, thank you for listening. And as always, go Gators.